All right, guys, today we are jumping into another blackboard session, going over the idea of progression. See, progression is a topic that doesn't get as much uh, sort of a, a spotlight when it comes to training in the way that we're gonna be talking about it today. I know a lot of you are thinking about load on the bar or reps, and that is a type of progression, but what we really need to focus on when we're talking about progression is what's the goal, right? So. For example, if you look at this list and as we go through this list and if you're a power lifter, some of these may not make sense to you. But if you're just a, a strength fan or an avid strength enthusiast or someone who just wants to look really, really jacked, we need to start looking at different means of progression in order to make sure that we can maintain that progress over the course of time. And you're not just focusing on only one of these aspects so that you can get more out of your training hopefully stay uh, out of any sort of injuries and continue to get better and better as time goes on. So as we know, one of the first means of progression, especially if you're a power lifter, is weight on the bar. That's super simple, right? Week one, you do 50 pounds. Week two, you do 55 pounds. You've progressed the amount of weight that you can use on the bar. Very straightforward, nothing super crazy, nothing really you know, much deeper that we need to go into. But one modifier here for weight is you can start implementing chains, you can start implementing bands. If you do a set for five with straight weight, add a set for five with bands, with chains, whatever, you have progressed, right? Very simple, very straightforward. Next one is reps. This one is kind of a cooler one because we can break reps into progressing on a single set. So you do a set of six instead of a set of five that you did last week or the amount of sets total. That increases your total amount of reps. Uh, one of the best rep schemes to progress uh, that we've used here at the compound is a lot of sets of fewer reps, right? You can do 10 sets of two, then you can work up to 15 sets of two, work up to 20 sets of two, whatever that is. The idea is you're getting the same volume, you're getting the same amount of reps in, and you're slowly increasing them, but you're just kind of messing with one end of it versus the other to kind of help you whatever your goal may be. Next means of progression that I want you guys to really think about is time. And time as a means of progression is really, really cool because there's a lot of different ways that we can kind of focus in on that. I know for strongman competitors, a lot of our events are for a certain amount of time. It's max reps in 60 seconds. It's max uh, reps or weight in 75 seconds. It's max distance or max time, right? So in the world of strongman, this makes a lot more sense. In the world of powerlifting, not so much, but it can still be a tool that you can utilize in your training to help you progress and get better. So what we're talking about here is we can talk about the time it takes you to complete a set. You can increase or decrease that amount of time. You can also break it down into how long it takes you to do each rep. So controlling that eccentric, controlling that uh, concentric, right? Trying to understand and to grow based on the goal that you have. If you're a bodybuilder, you may get more progress out of increasing your total time of each individual set, right? You can break that down even further into time for each individual rep, right? So there's a lot of ways that you can focus in on your training and to understand if you're actually progressing, that is more than just the weight and the reps uh, per that set, right? So for example, if you do a set of 10, that takes you 15 seconds, that's great, but if you can add some weight, add some time, you've obviously gotten better and better, right? So the idea of manipulating the time and the tempo of your training is a really cool way to assess your progress over the course of time. Next one, this may be more specific towards power lifters, but range of motion, either increasing it or decreasing the range of motion can be a form of progression. Obviously, increasing the range of motion, you're moving the weight a farther distance, therefore it's more difficult, thus progression. But in the world of powerlifting, if you can decrease your range of motion, decrease your range of motion on the bench, increase that arch a little bit, get a better setup, get better skilled at setting up for a bench press, for a squat, whatever you may be doing, if you can get that decrease in range of motion a little bit, you may be able to push more weight, and that is a form of progression. Again. We're trying to think about these things from all different angles in order for you to get the most out of your training. If you're a strong man, there may be times where you have to do an elevated deadlift, right? 
where the weight that you can do at a certain range of motion may be more than you can at an increased range of motion. That's kind of natural, right? So if you're noticing that your 18 inch pull is a little bit stronger than your 16 inch pull, now you know that if you can increase your 16 inch pull, you'll also increase your 18 inch pull. You see how we're kind of going with this? Again, this is a lot of stuff that I know a lot of people don't really spend a lot of time thinking about because we get a ton of questions. It's like, oh, I did X amount of reps, X amount of sets, blah, blah, blah. How come I'm not progressing? It's like, you may be progressing. It just may be in a different sort of aspect that you're not keeping track of. Next up, especially for athletes, this is a really great one. Off-season uh, powerlifters, strongman. Decreasing rest periods, that is also a form of progression. This means that you're getting more athletic. It also means that you're able to get more work in in less time. Endurance is a fantastic foundation for your training, especially for off season. And manipulating your rest periods for, uh, and manipulating the amount of time that you're actually taking in between your sets is a really, really good way to progress for endurance, for off season, for conditioning, for losing body fat, whatever you want to do. The idea is simple. Simply start decreasing the amount of time that you're resting, spend more time training. These two, however, are going to be two very, very different ones that I'm sure not a lot of you have thought about. The decrease of a base of support and varying the center of gravity. So let's start with the decreasing of the base of support. Think about if you are, if you're not a power lifter or you're just a strength athlete or you're just a strength enthusiast, what do you think is harder? A bilateral squat, a regular squat with a barbell on your back or a single leg squat? right? A single leg squat is more difficult because you have a smaller base of support. So if you're thinking about this in a way of uh, progression, if you're used to doing single leg squats where you hold onto the rack, now what you can do instead of holding on with your whole hand, you can hold on with only a couple fingers, you can hold on to a smaller, like a PVC pipe, and eventually work up to the, to the point where you can just do single leg squats without any sort of base of support because you have the base of support of the stick you're, or the rack you're holding onto plus your foot. So you take that base of support away, thus making it more difficult. So the more skilled you are at a movement, the smaller base of support that you can actually start utilizing. And again, that is a form of progression. You can be using the same weight for a single leg movement or a single arm movement, but if you are decreasing the amount of support that you have externally, you're getting better and you're progressing. Last but certainly not least is you vary the center of gravity. So we're going to be going over this a little bit more in depth in another video, uh, but this specifically is a really cool concept to kind of start thinking about. So for example, if I were to describe to you a goblet squat versus a back squat, what would you say is more difficult? Well, you would probably say it depends, but the idea is simple. The closer you get to having something right in the center of your gravity, the easier it is. So if we can vary a weight outside that center of gravity, for example, if I were to do a back squat where it's right over my midfoot versus doing some sort of a zercher versus doing some sort of, even using our SS yoke bar, that pushes the weight out in front of you a little bit more and makes it more difficult to kind of stabilize. So anything that moves away from your center of gravity is going to increase the the weight or the difficulty of that movement, right? So the other big part of varying the center of gravity is not just varying the weight in front or behind you, it's also varying it from side to side. For example, if I've been doing walking lunges with two dumbbells in my hands, it's actually going to be more difficult for me to stabilize and maintain a good position if I take one of those dumbbells out of my hands and only use one. Same thing for farmer's handles, same things for all sorts of carries, loads, all of that. If you're varying the weight, left to right, front to back, side to side, you're going to find that it has a very different stimulus on your body. And it is something that you can, again, progress over time. So if you think about it that way, if you started at doing some sort of a, a front squat, right? Or even doing a high bar squat or even a low bar squat. If now you can start manipulating where that bar is placed or where that load is placed on your body. For example, now you go into some sort of a zercher hold, you're going to find that that is much more difficult to maintain that really good position because that force is pushing you away from your center of gravity, 
right? So loading events for my strongman, holding things out in front of them, that's going to be very, very difficult, especially the larger it is, right? You see all these massive strongmen on TV and have these giant stones and they come out this far, right? So if you gave them a smaller stone right here, that's closer to their center of gravity, thus being more, uh, much more easy. So thinking about all of these things, I know it was a lot. It was kind of like a, a verbal diarrhea at you. But understanding that all of these things can be tracked, understanding that all of these things can be manipulated in your training, and these are all ways for you to look at your training and to understand if you are getting better or if you're getting worse. What you track, you can manage. What you manage, you can actually progress. So at the end of the day, understand what your goal is. If you're a power lifter, time, uh, rest periods, they may not matter nearly as much, right? If you're a strong man, rest periods and time may be one of the biggest parts of your training. If you're just a strength athlete or a strength enthusiast, play around with all of these. The idea is very simple. Understand what you're doing, understand where you're starting with that, and understand means that you can get better at those things. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. We're going to be shooting a whole lot more here, so stay tuned for that. So make sure to like, share, subscribe, do all the things. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.